five, 10 years from now, paint us the picture of where Snapify's at, the impact it has, what it looks like. You mean after the IPO? Yes. Okay. What's going on, everybody? And welcome back to the next episode of the Next Big Thing podcast. Today, we welcome on Ron Rahav, the CEO and co-founder of Snapify, a company redefining professional photography and allowing users to snap more and edit less. So with that being said, Ron, thanks for your time. Welcome on the podcast. Thank you for having me. Excited to be here and I'm looking forward to this uh, session. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about Snapify. Uh, tell me about your comp- Tell us about your company. Sure. If that's okay with you, maybe I will start with the clip. I will share with you our uh, company clip uh, on WeFunder page. Um, then I will explain about the company and we'll take it further. Is that okay? Perfect. That sounds good. Cool. So here it is. So this is our WeFunder campaign. Can you imagine life before Netflix? Physically going to the store to return the movie the next day? With today's video streaming services, it seems like a distant memory, right? But when it comes to professional photography, it seems we're still stuck in the 90s. This is where Snapify AI comes in. Just like ChatGPT is disrupting content creation, Snapify AI is revolutionizing professional photography. In a world where everything is delivered in a fraction of a second, I was shocked that nothing like Snapify AI existed. It was clear to me that Snapify would be a game changer for this $15 billion available market that is so desperately asking for change. We realize that there is a real need to redefine the post photo shoot experience for photographers to make it faster, more secure, and effortless. That's what AI is all about. And this is what we're doing here at Snapify, delivering perfect experiences in a snap. Snapify AI is the first all-in-one AI-powered solution for professional event photographers. Our intuitive suite automatically backs up, filters, edits, and creates a web photo gallery during the event in real time, cutting the post-shooting editing process down by 90%. By 2025, the professional photography market is expected to reach more than $53 billion. With over $600 million revenue expected in five years. Imagine being one of the early investors of these AI companies, helping the world run better, faster, and much more efficiently. Well, now you can with Snapify AI. So this is our uh, WeFunder clip. Um, we are running this campaign for the last uh, three months and having uh, great results. Let me dive in a little bit and share with you our pitch deck. Uh, so a- as you already understand, Snapify is about redefining the Photoshop experience. And the imagination, there is a big difference between the imagination and reality when it comes to professional photography. People see photographers at events, taking good photos, enjoying, and they really enjoy doing that. But in reality, they're less enjoying doing the post-editing because it's a cumbersome, lengthy process that it's taking a lot of time. Usually every one hour shooting is one hour processing and there is experience gap for everyone. So this is a day in the life of an event photographer. Let's say a wedding they end the event, the wedding at 1 a.m., 2 a.m., whatever, very late. They drive home tired. They need to back up the material. So this is a process that they must do. They don't want to lose. They back up in a hard drive. They back up on, uh, on whatever, on Dropbox or any other mean. And then usually they go to sleep and they start the day afterwards when they already have a backlog of work of that event, maybe more events. And what they need to do is basically do the culling, the filtering of all the pictures, what is good, what is bad, what is going in, what is going out. And that's a tedious work that takes hours. And afterwards, they need to edit. Now, if they do it the next day, it will take the whole day. It's a process of about 10 hours. And usually they have more events, especially in the high season, and are getting tired and frustrated and and burned out because they need to do a lot of post-processing of events. So the problem is not just with the photographers. Obviously, the event owners and the attendees, the guests, are affected by it because the event owners 
having a lot of pressure on the photographers to bring the materials, to bring all the happy moments back. And this is what we want to do. We want to accelerate those happy moments. Um, so they're affected by it. The guests usually don't get their photos. Um, and this is another problem that we are solving. By accelerating the job of the photographer, we're also bringing happiness also to the people that are enjoying that event by reliving those moments um, uh, faster than before. We heard about situation of two months, three months, four months uh, waiting for the gallery, and that's uh, pretty painful. So our mission is to redefine that experience and make it, making it more fast, secure, and simple um, in a snap, of course. How do we do it? Very, very brief. We have a device which is on site. The device is getting the photos from the camera wirelessly. Then we send the photos to the cloud via 4G or 5G or any other mean. And in the cloud, we basically do all the post-processing post -processing as if the photographer was doing it uh, afterwards. So we do the calling, we do the editing. We start to arrange the gallery to a point where the photographer can basically do only fine tuning later. So instead of the, those 10 hours of work, he can basically invest only half an hour or maybe one hour in that gallery, and then it's ready to be uh, uh, delivered to the customers. We heard about our customers that are really happy about it because they can deliver next day or after two days. They just need to go over and review what we did. The market is pretty big. The whole market of the professional photography is somewhere between 47 to $53 billion. Uh, the wedding and the events uh, 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 and all the serviceable available market is about 15. And we expect to reach in about three to five years, 1% out of that, that. That's the common practice and get to one, $150 million uh, serviceable uh, obtainable market. This is in a very brief uh, <laughs> about the pitch deck. Uh, and I'm um, happy to, to hear your questions. And well, Ron, I, I love the idea and I love the problem it's solving. Can you tell us a little bit more about the story behind Snapify? Sure. Maybe I will start with uh, myself. Um, I will share with you about uh, where I came from and how I got to this, and, and then it will evolve to the story of uh, Snapify. So uh, one minute about me. I learned computer engineering, and I basically started with a company called LiveView about 16 years ago. And LiveView is about transmitting, transmitting video from the field to the studio. It's serving broadcasters. I've been there 15 years. I was a developer. Then I was uh, heading the service, product, uh, customers, and uh, sales. Um, and the reason why I'm mentioning that is because it's very correlated to what we do at Snapify. Snapify is also about, about transferring content from the field to eventually to, to um, the event owners and their guests, but with different media, different means, different use case. And after I I, I, uh, I left LiveView, I basically met uh, my partner, Shai, you saw, you saw him in the clip. And what you didn't see is the story, how, how he came up with uh, with this idea. So it's it's a nice story. Um, Shai and his wife, Genia, basically did a vows renewal ceremony after 20 years of marriage. And they were anxious to get the photos. And they called the photographer and they, and they asked him, where are our photos? And the guy said, it will take me about four to six weeks. And Shai didn't accept this answer. He's a guy who doesn't have a lot of patience. He, he liked to dig in into stuff. And he started to think, why does it happen? Why why, why do I need to wait four to six weeks? What, what does it is going to do with the technology today AI and you know everything that is happening. Why we need to wait so much time? And he discovered basically the pain point that that Snapify is all about, right? That that with all the progress of technology, photographers are still sitting and basically processing manually the photos and processing even with advanced technology and Adobe Lightroom and everything that is is there. Still, nothing has changed has changed in terms of uh, delivery time. So what I did after I heard this nice story. I went and I called the photographer that was shooting me in my wedding 16 years ago. And I asked him, if there was such a service, would you use it? And he said, no, I will never use this kind of product. And I was kind of, you know, I was devastated because I really liked the solution, but he said, no. 
Then I called 20 more photographers and they all said yes. So I understood that one out of 20 probably will not be our customers, at least at the beginning, because there is a lot of people that are used to kind of flow and, and that's okay. But those other 20 are potential uh, customers. So I started working, uh, uh, I joined the Shy and we start to to uh, develop and, and uh, bring more people on board. And what I like most about Snappify is the customers. I like working with those people because you know they're in the business of love. They in touch with people, they touch happy moments, maybe the most important moments in, the, in, in people's life. And I like that. I felt that those people that I, I, I want to have connections with, I will be happy to have them as customers. And that's why I started uh, to go with Snapify along with, of course, the market potential. But it's, you know, it's all about humans. So I, I like the interactions with them. And this is main reason why I like being at Snapify and, and move it uh, forward. It's interesting. I don't know much about the industry, but to know that these professional photographers are capturing the most beautiful moments, yet you have to wait four to six weeks, probably at minimum, sometimes at worst, like four months. That does seem a little strange. Why do you think the professional photography industry has such an outdated workflow? That's a good question. Um, I think that um, I wouldn't say it's a, it's not a niche, but it's it's not a huge industry, and there are different type of photographers and different type of photography. So there are niche solutions for different parts of the workflow, for different parts of photographers. And what Snapify is about is taking the whole workflow from what I like to call glass to glass, from the glass of the photographer to the glass of the last attendees. And no, there is no solution that is taking it from the first mile until the last mile glass to glass. There are many micro solutions that are dealing only with calling, only with editing, only with backup. But there is no solution to taking the whole flow. And I think one of the reasons that it's, first of all, it's hard. <laughs> we are a multidisciplinary uh, 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 company that is dealing with hardware, wireless, cellular, web application, mobile application, algorithm. Um, there is a lot to do. And, 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 and it's hard to take. The, 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 I think this is also one of the reasons where there are niche solutions for niche uh, for for the sector of photography, but not the whole workflow. So, Ron, I want to get into the product itself. Um, mm -hmm. For anybody that knows, editing is a very particular process um, for event photography, and uh, it takes a lot of time. So, can you walk me through uh, your artificial intelligence and machine learning process, and how you put that together? Sure. So. Um, First of all, we get, there is the first mile. This is also a challenge. We get the photos from the field to our cloud. I can talk also about that maybe later, but once we get that in the cloud, first of all, there are a lot of options. Uh, other solutions that are on desktop oriented, you need to bring the material to the desktop and, and run in and to give the update. Once you have it in the cloud, it's easier. Uh, we can use many services and we develop services. Now, the AI, specifically now, and I will answer that, the, the AI is focusing on two main domains. The first one is what is called culling, which is basically differentiating between the good ones and the bad ones. And the second one is the editing. Let's start with the culling. That's a tedious job going over 5,000 photos after a wedding and decide which one is good, which one is bad. This category, this specific um, category is also, there are subcategories. There are blurred pictures, closed eyes, off-scene photos. There are many categories. Now, what we need to do and what we are doing is using sophistic, sophisticated algorithms in order to train a model what is a good picture. And even when you train a model what is a good picture, some people will say this is good. Some people say well, this is bad. You need to find the point of interest in the picture and basically give it uh, some kind of flexibility for the photographer to come and say, I want it to be strict, so I want only 10% of the pictures, or I want it to be more light, 
and I'm okay with leave me 70% of the, of, of the photos. And this is what we are doing. So we are training the models, our models, uh, not only to decide what is good and what is bad, but also what will be the tolerance of the photographer. So this is one place. The second place is about editing. Now, obviously, editing is, is complex. Um, uh, analyzing a photo and decide how to make it better, is it's not an easy problem. And many people are trying to solve it, and there are several solutions for Google Photo, and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so the, first of all, there is there is the the matter of of the batch, five thousand photos to do all of them, and so you need to go one by one, and basically the the, the software, and basically um, uh, adapt and adjust the right preset, the right model for every photo, and that's also done by training. So what we do basically is to go over a lot of data set, a lot of data set, and train our model to to decide according to the conditions. The light, uh, the venue, the type of the of the event, what is good and what is bad, and how to basically transform this picture from decent uh, condition to a good condition. It's all about training, and this is why we invest a lot in data set and having a lot of events. And the more we will have, the better we will be. Um, one of the things that we are going to do uh, over the next version is basically learn the user behavior and the, the settings that they are doing on the photos and adjust, make it even more personalized. And according to their personal uh, preferences to do the next editing personali personalized for them. So you touched on this a little bit a couple minutes ago, but uh, what's your guys' business model? How do you guys make money? How are you, what's your go-to-market strategy? Um, how are you attacking, uh, expanding your business? Yeah. So... Um, the business model is based on subscription, and and we take into account the number of photos that we need to process. So there is um, a starting point of, uh, it depends on the package, but let's say $89 for the first 10,000 uh, photos, and from there, something like uh, five cents per photo. There are different packages, but but, but this is the concept. The, the entry level is, is pretty low, and then we charge according according to the usage. Um, now, the core customers are obviously event photographers. We are not restricting that to event photographers, but this is our core. We also had some inquiries from um, photo journalists and, and others, uh, but we focus on event photographers. And there are different types also of the event photographers. photographers there are some who are doing 10 events a year, and there are some that are doing 100 events a year. And, and each one of them has a different uh, need. And that's why we have packages that answers those those needs. Um, in terms of how we approach them, so at the moment we are very high touch. We touch every customer. We are reaching out, even if we are doing like an ad. We are getting back to every photographer, asking their needs. It's good also for us at this stage to learn from them. It it's always good, but especially. Uh, in this stage, uh, we, we like to touch every user and to learn from them. And after we understand that we are a good fit, because it's, it's also very important, um, then we start we start a very short pilot. And from there, we are a, a, along the way. Of course, this this will continue. We will continue to, to work with customers directly. But I think it will be uh, something like mid-touch and then low-touch and maybe one day zero-touch so people can order the service by themselves and start using it. Uh, but but right now, it's 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 high touch. Um, there are agencies of photographers. There are some agencies that basically a roof for hundreds of photographers, 300 photographers. And we also are in touch with those. There is a big market in the U.S. for a school photography. Uh, you probably know it better than me. Uh, and uh, <laughs> Oh, yeah. And, <laughs> and and there are tons of photographers that are dealing in in, in school photography, and we are uh, also in touch with agencies that basically gather several um, uh, school photography in certain countries. Uh, that's another strategy. So go with the big groups of, of photographers. Um, there is also an option to go with resellers. We we engage with resellers that can take us to a different events. Think about a concert where. Um, uh, you get your photo in real time. 
or very close to the event. Um, think about uh, uh, company uh, conferences or uh, company trips or meetings or whatever. And and the next go to market option, which is kind of business development uh, strategy, is to go with uh, platforms. There are many platforms that are basically gather several service providers, photography after I think maybe after venue in some of those places. This is the second one to uh, to order and 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 platform like the Knot, which I assume you are familiar with. There are many others um, are basically gathering a lot of service providers. So this is more kind of we can do, and we are starting to do cooperation with this kind of platforms in order to bring our solution to those. Um, to the, to the awareness of photographers and eventually also to their customers. Um, one thing to mention is that the photographers are obviously are the first layer, our core customers, but their customers are also our customers. We want them to be pleased as well because we want them eventually to get the photos via Snapify Suite, via Snapify Web Gallery. So in the long term, we see a situation where couples or event owners coming to us and saying uh, or coming to photographers and basically asking the photographer to use Snapify. So we want to please also them. So I want to go back to something I touched on uh, two questions ago. Um, You say that Snapify cuts the time for event photographers by 90%, which sounds like an incredible uh, efficiency uh, booster for them. but the product has to necessarily meet the type of product that they would want to build themselves without the product. So what is the feedback you've been receiving uh, from event photographers as to how well the the artificial intelligence and machine learning is generating images? And um, you know, what's the feedback you've been receiving from them on that front? Yeah. So most of the feedback is very positive and and supporting the concept of all-in-one suite that takes the whole workflow from end to end. Um, Of course, there are many uh, improvement requests in different parts of the workflow. Now, interesting fact is that if you will interview 100 photographers, you will get a lot of different answers about what is important to each one of them. So to some of them, the backup in the real time is very important. To others, the calling, the filtering is very important. And for others, the editing. And I think it's related to the pain point that they have. So the the feedback that we get is is really depends on what is important to the photographer. And so if it's if it's about the real time and the backup, so they want to do it faster with bigger files, like raw files, which is more hard to deliver because of the size. This is one thing. If it's about the calling, so they want more categories, not just blurry and closed eyes. So they want to have their um, specific uh, um, uh, filters, and we are working on on some of them. And if we are talking about the editing, that's of course the whole world. Each 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 photographer is basically also a kind of an artist, right? They're dealing with an art. Um, so of course we get feedbacks about you know. Um, more exposure, more lightning, uh, different uh, color scheme, and, and and these kind of things. And we are addressing that by giving them the tool in our suite to do it by themselves. And as I mentioned before, we started to learn the behavior in order to serve them better. Um, so, yeah, let's wrap up the, the main feedback. Now, I saw that Snapify has a patent pending technology. Can you tell us what makes this technology so special and why it will give Snapify a competitive advantage against its competitors? Yeah. So first of all, and I I keep saying it, I'm sorry that I'm repeating that, but again, the end-to-end, the ability to keep it all in one place, that's very important because it's, it's enough that you need to do download and upload to a different platform that's that's alone can can take days not because it really takes days because they don't have time and they forget to do it or they have other jobs to do so the one one uh, place for for all that's one key differentiator um the second is that we are dealing we are quite unique that we are dealing both with hardware and software 
the ability to take the, uh, the content in real time and do something with it in real time, that's a concept that doesn't exist today. I mean, as I mentioned before, there are many products that are doing, but it's after the fact. If you do it live during the event, the potential is endless. Imagine a situation where you go into a wedding, you scan a QR code, you give your consent to us a consent to recognize your face, and you start getting your photos during the event. This is something that you cannot do with post-processing. You can do it only if you do real-time. So the real-time here is a big differentiator, along with the whole suite that takes from glass to glass, from the camera to the last attendees. So with that real-time processing, this is just more a question of curiosity, but will the customers be able to pull up the app, see the pictures, and then tell the event photographer, hey, I really like this picture. Can we get some more of these types of pictures? And then they're also getting more value because they're getting what they want and they see immediately how the picture turns out. I tend to believe that this kind of feedback will be more from the uh, event owners. I find it hard to believe that it will be from the last attendee because, you know, there can be thousands of people in an event and it will be hard to manage for one photographer to manage all the feedback from everyone. But for sure, um, and we have start, we started to work on that, the event owners... Uh, should and give feedback to the photographer. I like that more, I like that less, maybe give me more uh, uh, pictures uh, uh, similar to that. Um, that. That definitely something that, that we will have. So I want to pivot a little bit and learn a little bit about your entrepreneurial journey. Uh, what would you say is your biggest motivator uh, to be an entrepreneur? It's not easy every day. There's a lot of problems I'm sure you deal with daily, weekly. Uh, what's your biggest motivator? There are a lot of motivate, <laughs> a lot of things that motivate me in this uh, journey. Uh, I think, um, first of all, you must have a connection with the product. Um, if you don't have it, um, it's it's very hard to get up in the morning and and do all this hard work if you don't have um, emotional connection with with the product. Um, so, given my background in live view, I'm already familiar with the domain of bringing content from one place to another. And as I mentioned before, I, I really like, although I'm quite new, only two years to the domain of event photography, I really, really like the the customers and what they bring to the to their to their customers. And um, so I'm I'm really connected and I think that's that's really important. The second thing is about building a team. That's something I always like and, and when you are doing uh, a venture like this, when you you go and you are entrepreneur and you are leading a company, uh, it's it's hard to find talents and it's hard to find people that you like working with. But when it happens, it's the best thing ever. You now, what what can be better than finding the people that you want to work with, engage with them, sit with them every day, learn from them. I learned a lot by profession professionals that I bring to the table. So the product and the people that are bring in are the most exciting parts of this journey. What would you say is the number one characteristic of the people you hire um, that makes you so happy to work with them? What's the best qualities of the people that are working with you at Snapify? Um, so what, I, what I'm looking at people is about being authentic and open with me. So um, I like people that are direct and come and say if they... If they cannot do it, they come and say. If they don't do it on time, they just come and say it. And I like this uh, authentic people. And the, in second in place is about being professional. Even if they are very nice to work with and they are very authentic, I need them to be professional and deliver. And those are the two main things that I'm looking at people. Now, talking about building a team to achieve something special, you worked at you were an executive at LiveU. And it went from zero to a $500 million acquisition. What were some of the key takeaways you took from that experience? And how are you implementing those lessons into Snapify today? Yeah. So, yes, I started at LiveView um, at the early days, 2006. And as someone who just started in the industry, it was very hard for me to see how things are eventually happening and combine to a real product, to a real process uh it's very hard when you are not familiar with the process you think uh 
it's it's hard. I'm, I'm not sure it will happen. H- how they will make it work? I mean, uh, nothing is working here, <laughs> right? And why would someone take this product and use it? Uh, th- this is how you think when you are young and, and you, are, you don't have enough experience in the industry. Um, so I saw that happening, even if things didn't work and customer didn't like the product or they returned it or, or whatever, eventually uh, you can do mistakes. You can take different paths. You can do even a whole pivot, but eventually if you are, uh, uh consistent enough and you know where you want to go, um, then, then it's possible. So I think the, the knowing that even if there are problems, we will make it happen. That's that's the the best lesson that I learned. I learned there. And does that just come from consistency every single day? Just continuing to do it and continuing to have that belief, knowing that it will happen. It's just going to take time. Consistency and the right people. So also, you know, when we do mistake, we also do mistakes with people. Sometimes people that are relevant for the first stage are not are less relevant for later stage. So they find different roles, different paths, and and we, you have to change. You have to change all the time. So you guys are raising on WeFunder, uh, currently raising capital. Uh, can you talk about that raise, how it's been, and what you plan on using that uh, new influx of capital for? Yeah, so it's live about three months. Um, uh, we are doing very well in different angles from retail investors and and angels and accredited investors. And basically, we are going uh, to use the, this funding, obviously, for R&D. We are still developing the product um, operations because we do have hardware and some operation uh, costs. And marketing, We that, that's more or less the, how we are going to use it and and and. This is very encouraging and gave us a lot in order to do over the next few months. Uh, we are still raising. Obviously, we need to do more, but this is more or less how we are going to use it. And and if we keep that pace, we will be in a very good shape. So I'm always curious about uh, long-term vision. Uh, sometimes in other interviews, uh, people have put it as uh, my crazy goals, but um in connection to that, I was listening to an interview with uh, Roloff Bolta. He's the uh, partner at Sequoia Capital uh, over in Silicon Valley. And he has this question that he asks to uh, in every investor meeting. And I think it's a really good question. So I'm interested to hear your answer. Um, the question is, what is the scale of your ambition? What's the scale of your ambition with Snapify? Snapify will be the number one solution for events photographers. That's my ambition. That's a fantastic answer. And, <laughs> you know, I, I, I've i always, in all of these interviews, I'm taken aback by um, people's mission. And you seem like another mission-driven guy. If, if, if you could explain your mission in a couple sentences, what's your mission with this brand? What, what keeps you, you know, going every day? So um, I think that... If we will manage to touch the whole chain of people that I mentioned, so I mentioned three layers, photographers, the event owners, and the attendees, the guests. Once we manage to touch all the people, then I will know we reach our goal. Because if the last attendee, the, the I don't know, the uh, if a colleague from work is using Snapify in order to see the photos, and share them later on, then we manage to penetrate the old chain from the photographer until the last attendees. And this 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 will be our win. And from there, we just need to duplicate it to all events in the world. Um, the market is huge. And obviously, the US is our main focus. But thinking about events in other places in the world, you know, the second largest one is in India. A wedding there is about a week. With with maybe twenty thousand photos, it's crazy. Um, so w- there are so many places to develop, but um, to make it shorter and more concise, if once we touch the whole chain the pe- of people that are related to the event, then we know we win. 
Now, I always like to ask this question, but five, 10 years from now, paint us the picture of where Snapify is at, the impact it has, what it looks like, uh, any updates, the vision from there. Just paint us that picture. You mean after the IPO? Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So um, once we become the number one solution for event photographers, I can see here many value-added services. So I, I didn't speak about it till now, but there is so much to do. Once you control the flow and the content, there are so many add-ons and options. For example, we can be the payment gateway for, for photographers. Why would they do it in a different place? If the, if the content is already here in this platform, why won't they charge the customers via Snapify um, solution? Um, we can connect on the other side to print, to do things that are in, in kind of similar to Shutterfly and have connection with the, with the uh, print houses and basically deliver also merchandise and, 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 and physical albums. And, and what I see in the future, uh, once we master the event photography is a lot of uh, uh, add-on and correlation with, with the first mile at the event itself and the last mile with the products that can be produced with all the great content that we will uh, deliver. Well, Ron, I want to thank you so much for your time. I've really enjoyed getting to know Snapify, and I know we're going to follow its success. Uh, you seem like a very determined and uh, mission-driven founder, which uh, seems to be a common trait among our guests, but uh, I'm looking forward to following your guys' success at Snapify. Thank you very much. We uh, can't wait to watch the uh, we can't wait to watch the IPO happen. <laughs> <laughs> it will happen even sooner and, than. It yeah. So uh, with that being said, Ron, thank you, and uh, for all the listeners out there, um, we'll see you next time on the next episode of the next big thing. So long. Thank you very much. <laughs>